parked a car from motherfucking uh, <clears throat> Born to Mac. The drop caddy? <sighs> but I, it, was, it used to be, uh, it was, um, it was, uh, what's that? Black Cherry. It was Black Cherry and uh, had the white top with the white seats. And then I redid mm. it three times Burgundy and I shot I'm a Player video. If you look at Born to Mac and look at I'm a Player, it's the same car, but it, it totally got redone. And then, uh, where does mind. where does four one five's sideshow rank in the top ten in Bay Area songs? Classic. It's it's definitely a top ten classic. Definitely. Off top, right? Off the one, the five. Yeah, that's a classic. That's a in the Bay. I think you get everybody get a year. You get you get you get a summer, a year, a moment. You get a run, and you know, like Freaky Ta Freaky Tales came out. It was the hottest thing out. Like the majority cars going down the street bumping Freaky Tail. When right. 415 was out, everybody was bumping 415. I remember that was the summer of 89 and Richie Rich owned When I graduated from high school, nigga, because I had the tape. <laughs> Richie Rich, it was his summer, 89. He ran that summer. Off top, right? Him and D Lo? Yeah, they was they was popping. They had um <clears throat> Snitches had, uh, and bitches. Snitches and bitches, yeah. <laughs> that was hard, nigga. That was hard. All right. So yeah. And then over the years, man, that was, that's what Bay Area artists strive for, man, to take to have that moment where you running it. I'm top dog for this moment. So we all in there. Right. Fody had it many, many times. A lot of us had it, man. It's like a championship belt that just it circulates. You know what I'm saying? Some niggas had it longer than others, but it has it has passed hands. Exactly. And it's uh, it's just you know, it's just like if we had a, a award or a trophy or something, you know, a lot of cats get to hold it. I was the big dog for the year trophy, but yeah, they name will be inscribed in there for a particular season. For me, I just I fall in a whole different category. I fall in as the creator, right? I, I set the template for Bay Area rap, hip hop. Like when I said when I came with that slow funky, I was trying to be like Parliament, Funkadelic. Right. Ohio players. I wanted the slow, funky bass. Yeah. 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 So when you know, I got the, it just turned out to be the thing, man. You know. How did it feel knowing that the world was fucking with you when they wasn't at first? I remember when niggas was going hard on you. They was like hating on you, and then all of a sudden you motherfucking broke through. Yeah, because the thing at first they were saying. Uh, uh, you can't come out with rap records cussing like I was cussing. Mm -hmm. you just you just can't do it. It's just not. It's not. I don't know if it was illegal, but you just. Me, it wasn't illegal. Was Red Fox, Rudy Ray Moore, all them albums yeah. we bought as kids was did it before us. I put that shit out. I couldn't press them up fast enough, man. I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't manufacture them fast enough to sell them. So that was the end of that right there. And the motherfuckers. Did you Did you get the immediate feeling that the shit was hot because you was an independent artist? Or did it take you a minute to know, okay, like the whole world fucking with me? So I had growing pains, man. I had a, I had a moment where I was famous as fuck and broke. Because it was more about the street fame, street cred, niggas duplicating my tapes and shit. And it was just, I was famous though. But I didn't, I didn't realize how valuable that was for when I finally really started putting out records. Niggas was like, they ate that shit up. So I just think that... um. It really wasn't a time. I didn't have a time frame to to be to be worried or struggle or 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 uh, you know or feel like I failed. It was like it was. It went from it went from damn man, all these niggas riding my shit. I ain't I ain't really having no dough to like oh, oh shit, I got three hundred thousand in the bank. <laughs> it, went, it was that fast. Overnight. Yeah, as soon as I put the first thing out, really that you could buy that the money was coming to me, it never stopped coming to this day. And that's why you stayed independent? I stayed independent for as long as I could. We signed the Jive Records so we could be worldwide, nationwide. We didn't sign the Jive Records for the money. Well, Jive, because Houdini and the rap that they had handled and the people that you seen that they took care of? It was it was uh, Houdini and a mixture of Kumo D. You seen, how, you seen how big Houdini music was everywhere. Do you see how big Kumo D had? Because he became like bigger than LL Cool J. Well, how are you like me now? He was the biggest nigga in the world. He squashed LL for a minute. He, 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 he really did, girl. For a hot minute. For about three minutes. 
So I went over to Jive, and then niggas like 40 seen what happened with me. They was like, I'm about to go over there and Pimp C, Spice One. They all came to Jive because I was there. I noticed that. I see I see how Pimp Spice One shit was hard. His first motherfucking record, Welcome to the Ghetto. You know why? And Banks. Go read the credits. Produced by Ann Banks. Produced the by big, Banks. The Produced big badass. I beat you to it, nigga. I know what that sound was. <laughs> nigga, the big badass. Yeah, so Banks. Banks, man. Whoa, 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 when I met Ann Banks, I stopped making beats. I was like, I'm, I'm on autopilot now. I'm cool. Ann Banks got a beat on, on one of my records when I was on No Limit. And, and Banks was uh, real tight with uh, Mar, man. 